وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين. Beautiful. Okay, next short burst question. This is of extremely big interest to me personally because I do love dogs. I do love drawing pictures as well. So why are those <laughs> things har haram? We have music. Excellent question. We have dogs. We have chess even. Pictures. And drawing sure. animated beings, and I love chess too. That's tricky. I will for me. go through. I will go through all those with you. All right, uh, cool. But first thing I will say is the most important thing is the belief, right? So when we're talking about Islam and kufr and all of that, the most important thing you need to think to yourself is: Do I believe there is one great Creator that created everything? That is the one sole power of the universe that runs everything. That is the shahada, that nothing else should be worshipped except him. And do I believe that he sent prophets, that he sent those messengers, the first of them being Adam and the last being Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them. This is the core of Islam that you have to first believe, accept, reject, right? Mm -hmm. Then we get into particular rulings and madahib and fiqh. These are what we call the nitty gritties of it, right? Yeah. Uh, if you haven't gone through that first, I wouldn't really go worry about... I, I will explain them today anyway, but I'm just saying that we shouldn't let any of that render us because Allah, if we believe there is a creator, we believe there is Allah, then Allah knows better than me whether I should drink or not drink, or eat pork or not eat pork. Then if Allah says haram, it's haram. Now, uh, regarding dogs, we as Muslims love dogs. There's nothing against dogs. There is the mention of, of the kalb, the dog of Ashab al-Kahf, the people of the cave in the Quran and he's praised uh, and so on. Um, uh, there were companions that owned dogs for hunting and they asked the rulings of those and we have nothing against that. So if somebody has a dog for a purpose, whether it is for shepherding or uh, guarding or hunting and from an extension of that uh, emotional support or CI dogs uh, in Islam, that is permissible, right? The, when there is a purpose. Oh. When people have dogs without purpose and they use them in a way that is against the nature of the dog, then mm -hmm. in Islam that's not allowed. Meaning, you know, a dog has a nature to it, right? Like yeah. some dogs are naturally good shepherds. Some are naturally good guard dogs. When you take that and you put little bows on them and you put them around little kids and you act as if it's like a mouse, it's not. And that's mm -hmm. why you have every year so many children that are killed by their own dogs, masters that are bit, and so on, because yep. they're taking something Allah made with a certain role and giving it a different role, right? Mm -hmm. And that's wrong. It, it's oppression to the dog. If you have a dog for shepherding, like I said, or if you have a dog for hunting, or if you have a dog to protect your house, or if you have a dog because it helps you get around as a seeing eye dog or any of those things, that's halal, that's fine, no problem with that. But, you know, don't take a dog and uh, kiss it on the mouth and act like... I Make it like, your baby. Make, Make it, it your, your baby. baby, yeah. I, exactly. I see a lot so, of that in the West. Before you proceed, I just want to clarify quickly why I'm so interested in those little nitty-gritties, the details, because the thing is, I'm completely honest here with you and transparent. I always conduct myself like that on YouTube as well. I treat my sure. subscribers as friends. The point is that I always dive into everything I do deeply. Good. So I will Good. find out about everything, even if I would take Shahada, I would make research my mission on a daily basis. I would have to Excellent. look further and further, further. And this is why those little <clears> things <throat> that are now on my way, I have to discuss them prior. before taking No it problem. Away. I will explain all those things. The reason I was saying is because sometimes what happens is Shaitan gets you to procrastinate. And this is one of the tricks of sure. the devil that we know, you know. So if you have the belief, you shouldn't procrastinate. But any question you have, I'm here for you until okay. we do your shahad. And then after that as well. Thank you very much. Okay, All next right. one after dogs. Uh, let's go with music. Why is Excellent. music haram? Even though if I look at pop culture, I could already assume why it is haram. But Excellent. What like an explanation? So in Islam, we have certain forms of music that's halal. 
right? Mm -hmm. One of them being the uh, what we call spoken word, meaning poetry and beautiful wording that comes out. Nothing wrong with that. Some of the greatest scholars of Islam, like a Shafi'i and others, were great poets. Some of the mm -hmm. companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, like Hassan ibn Thabit, was a great poet. The Prophet was not a poet, peace be upon him, because Allah chose somebody that wasn't a poet, that wasn't literate, to reveal the Quran, to show is a miraculous book. He didn't write it. But there mm -hmm. were later people who became Muslim, like Hassan ibn Thabit, عنه, who was a great poet. So nothing wrong with that. There is an instrument called the duff, and that mm -hmm. is permissible in certain situations. And there are hadith on that, and there are references to that. So that is also permissible. Now when we go with general music, it has, a, a, scientifically, we have researched this issue, it has an effect on people, meaning your mood, your, like you said about hip-hop or even heavy metal culture. Um, mm. I have seen a mosh pit. I don't know if you know what a mosh pit is. Yeah. Um, okay. I have mm. seen people that I knew in high school that were very timid, gentle, good people. And when they were in that mosh pit and the music was blurring and the wording was such, they were punching people, they were kicking, <laughs> they were... And I was shocked at how different they became, became mm. because of that. Um, I don't know if you know Marvin Gaye is, but we used yeah, to true. call that baby making music because it would mm. have an effect on people of course. that would lead them to certain things. So in his, Islam... His father, sorry to interrupt again, his right. father allegedly killed Marvin because he was a believing Christian and he thought that his music is not permissible. So that is the conspiracy behind that. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, I learned yeah. something from you. Um, mm. so, so this is why music generally is not allowed in Islam because it has an effect on people that can take them to decisions that would regularly not be good for them, right? Not that this happens every time, right? But Islam is a religion that looks at the general good for mankind, right? So there are certain things that were left permissible to give you that leeway, like the duff in certain situations and poetry and, and spoken word and those things, that's fine. But other situations were then for, forbidden, like guitars and things like that, because then it's very hard to draw the line, right? Where do you stop somebody from saying, okay, this is now becoming into something that's making you, uh, you know, into a satanic, uh, weird mindset. Like, you know, very recently there was a rap concert in the US. I forgot the mm -hmm. name of the rapper. Um, but, you know, there was <sighs> such a frenzy made that people were yeah. stomping on other people and he continued the music. You know, the, right. it, it, it's, there's, you have to kind of step away from your own personal desires to see the bigger picture. I mean, I sure. can tell you, I come from a background where I was involved in gangs. And many times when we were about to do something violent or a fight, we would put on a rap song that had some mm -hmm. really violent, because it would get you pumped up for it. You know? Get you pumped up, so, yes. Yeah, so, so this is why that is something forbidden in Islam, but there are permissible forms. And again, if a Muslim does listen to music, it doesn't make him a kafir, it doesn't make him not Muslim. Everybody has their shortcomings. Some people, they may become Muslim and they still listen to music, and then slowly, slowly they replace that with the Quran and things that are more beneficial and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting answer. How about chess? I don't find anything Excellent. negative in chess. Actually, during this whole pandemic, I started mm -hmm. playing chess a lot, and I thought it, it is a great benefit to me personally. Right. Regarding chess, there is a hadith in Sahih Muslim. Um, some of the scholars of Islam, like Imam Shafi'i, he understood it to not reference the game itself, but rather the waste of time that comes with it. Um, other Definitely. scholars like Imam Ahmad and Malik, they took it. Uh, but the thing is, in Islam, you have to be careful when anything kind of distracts you so much that it takes you away from the purpose of your life. Like mm -hmm. I have seen people, uh, including some relatives of mine, that play chess for hours and hours a day until they start missing prayers, until they start, uh, you know, missing uh, and, and not just chess. I mean, many other video games. I mean, you can take right, anything, right, right. TikTok videos, whatever. So yeah. in essence, the issue is that when those sorts of things start taking you away from your obligations, then it becomes a distraction to the purpose of your life. Um, like I said, regarding chess, there's a difference of opinions among scholars of Islam about the game itself. Imam mm -hmm. Shafi'i, one of the very early and amazing scholars, he considered the game itself to be permissible and the hadith to be more in reference to 
the general games that waste time and take you away from your obligations than anything else. Yeah, that makes absolute perfect sense again, especially if you project yeah. that onto modern day games such as video games. I mean, obviously, yeah. we don't even have to talk about how that is one of the greatest distractions we I have mean, nowadays. There are kids that play 12 to 14 hours a day. Yeah. And I'm not talking about an extreme case. You know, in mm -hmm. Japan, no, no. in China, there's actually, uh, they have actual mental health facilities to get kids off of games and things. So, so of course. And again, if you were to play some games, uh, in moderation and uh, other than like dice games or games that have gambling, not yeah, those, yeah, yeah. but like other things, no. nothing wrong with that. But when anything gets to be where it starts to distract you from the purpose of your life, that's problematic. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I think it was in Japan that a player of World of Warcraft, he didn't move for a few days and that's how they realized that he died alone in his apartment, in his wow. little cubicle. Yeah. That's he scary. just died because of dehydration. He just kept on playing. Yeah, that's scary. Okay, next one is pictures or slash drawing animated beings. So regarding drawings, uh, to draw scenery or to mountains or things like this, nothing wrong with that. When you draw things that have a soul, if you draw it complete, this is something Islam forbids because of the fact that it does lead to things not that it by itself is worshiping an idol but it mm. could lead to it and we know in the past uh, like the calm of uh, Nuh, noah those things like building making pictures led them after generations but it led them to worshiping idols so mm. we don't allow that but if you are an artist you can make pictures but you leave some things like either you uh, leave part of the body undone or you don't make a full picture or as many Muslim uh, artists that will do, they'll, they won't make the eyes or they'll leave like something, some imperfection in there. So it doesn't start to lead to being something that would take you towards uh, idol worship or something like this. Uh, and again, if there's a benefit to the drawings, like Ibn Qudama, one of the great scholars in Al-Mughni says that if it's to teach people, for example, then it's permissible. So uh, you could draw, but you will have some restrictions in the sense that you don't make it so perfect as if you're trying to imitate the creation or you're trying to make it where you want it to be something that draws your attention so much that you now want to hang it and look at it and maybe your kids will come and start looking at it and go you know maybe that was some amazing being or something like this you know so mm -hmm. you have to islam believes in prevention instead of cure so you could still draw within those uh constraints inshallah yeah, that's beautiful, man. This really clarified a lot for me personally because oh, I just good. saw this black and white world where now there are oh. no pictures anymore. There is no sound no, to be no. heard. I, I mean, can like I said, I mean, walk a dog. No, no, we we have. Uh, I mean, if you go to Muslim countries, like I have an uncle. He's a hunter. He's he has many great dogs. Uh, right. My family in the village, they all have dogs because they have farms. Um, you know, I have friends in San Diego that are very good practicing Muslims that have dogs. For legitimate mm -hmm. reasons and you know we have certain rules and regulations with them there are muslim artists that are well known throughout the world um you know in all kinds of art and obviously the nasheed the islamic songs within the boundaries of nasheed are beautiful they're used uh, i mean we we hear them in all muslim countries alhamdulillah mm -hmm. okay perfect now we come to the christian questions the last remaining christian questions if Jesus is not the son of God, mm -hmm. who is the father? He was born of Mary Excellent. and God impregnated her, so to speak, through the Holy Spirit, according to Christianity. So who is the father? Excellent question. Uh, Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, was a prophet and he was born miraculously without a father. He doesn't have a father. And that's not something strange. If you look in the Bible, you will find Adam didn't have a father. You will find Eve didn't have a father or mother doesn't mean God is their biological father. You will find people referenced as children of God, like Solomon as the son of God, Israel as the son of God in the Bible. Uh, it is a term of endearment used for them. So we say that Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, has no father. God is not the physical father of anybody. God orders, and, and we are, right? In a term of endearment, Maybe in Aramaic, you could call God the Father in the sense of endearment. Maybe. I don't know Aramaic well enough to say that. But mm -hmm. no doubt that 
physically, God is not the father of anybody. He is above needing children or a wife or a mother or dad or any of that kind of thing. Um, as Adam and Eve had no father and no mother, and they were miraculously born by the order of God. Jesus was miraculously born without a father by the order of God. So the differentiation is essentially being created and not yes. being made by the father or yeah, exactly. biologically all, created. All, all of us were created by God's order. Before we were in right. the wombs of our mothers, we were souls, right? Allah ordained in this world that we have a father and mother. But if Allah orders it like Adam and Eve, you're born without a father and mother. As Jesus was, peace and blessings be upon all of them. Speaking about Adam and Eve, this is something again, of particular interest to me personally, the Christian narrative of Adam and Eve, mm. Eve essentially convicts basically Adam to sinning. She brings him to sin. She listens to the devil, to the snake, mm -hmm. and Adam starts listening to her. This story is actually very dear to me because I've seen it in my personal life. So this is going to sound very misogynistic. But mm -hmm. at the same time, every time we as men, we start listening to women rather than to God, so to speak, rather than <laughs> to... You understand to ourselves, right? Sure. And then to God, we kind of get off stray. I'm sure that plenty of men have experienced that, and if not, then I would even make the argument that then you haven't listened closely and haven't observed closely what is going on within your life, and even within Islam, obviously we have a male and female structure. The man of is, course. I believe, the leading person. So that this is, is why this this story of origin made so much sense to me that instead of listening to God, Adam listened to the woman. But in Islam, it's a bit different. In Islam, it's different. Islam, we don't actually blame Eve for it. Rather, we say they both were tempted by the devil and they listened to the devil um, mm -hmm. instead of listening to God. Uh, we, we, we based our narration on authentic sources and so on. We don't go with uh, biblical sources because they have so much of the changes in it and so on. Mm -hmm. Having said that, um, the Prophet, peace be upon him, did warn us that one of the first things that destroyed the earlier nations like Ben Israel was the fitna, the, the trials and revolutions that came through women and a lot of the jealousies and, and misinformation they gave to husbands and so on. And this is something that we should be very careful about. Um, mm -hmm. Women are, uh, in many ways, very intelligent, very capable. In many ways, there are certain things that they have weaknesses and, and men have their own uh, strong points and weaknesses. Everybody has their role. In Islam, the man is the leader. He is the decision maker. Yes, he can consult his wife and his children, but he is the head of the household. He's responsible yeah. for the household, and he needs to make those decisions, and those decisions are the final decisions in a household. All right. Yeah, so in Islam, that is no different, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I just simply like the analogy because it made so much sense to me that Adam actually listened to the woman and not to God. Uh, this is how he went mm -hmm. off stray. Anyways, another question for me, and this is really important for me to understand, is you mentioned the Injil at the beginning of our talk. Sure. We don't really know what the Injil is because we don't really have it now, right? The question that I'm having is, out of an Islamic perspective, Jesus preaches monotheism, but he's preaching yeah. that in the land of the Jews, right? So they are already monotheistic. Sure. They already worship one God. So what is the Injil? What could it have been? What did he really preach in those lands? Excellent. Um, Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, he preached monotheism as every prophet preached monotheism. The Jews were mm -hmm. monotheistic, but there were many sects amongst Jews that worshipped idols, they worshipped the golden calf, for example, they worshipped wealth in many ways, they corrupted the law in many ways, they charged, as we know historically, they charged people to go in the church, or in the synagogue, or in the place mm -hmm. of worship, in the temple, which was wrong. So he came to rectify the law, he came to correct the law, and that's what many prophets did before him. Even Moses preached monotheism to Jews who were monotheistic, but they had gone astray. So okay, he true. came to correct the people, and to bring them back on track. The Injil is the revelation that was given to the Prophet Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. Aspects of it may be in the New Testament today, meaning certain teachings from it may have come down in those traditions, but we know the New Testament as it is today was written in Koine Greek, as you mentioned, and was written mm -hmm. centuries later. So it is not the Injil itself, but some aspects of those teachings could be there. How do we know what's right from wrong? We evaluate with the Quran.
Okay. All right. Plenty of questions that are written down, you already answered whilst speaking about it. So I want to jump to my last chapter of questioning, so to speak. Questions about reverting. And I think this is the most important part, obviously. Excellent. If, if I would revert, would I need to circumcise, first and foremost? Great question. Um, regarding circumcision for men, it's a part of the tradition that has been there from the time of the earlier prophets and in Islam. Um, and the general rule is that if somebody does revert, yes, they go and get circumcised. But uh, we also know that due to age and time and place, that may not be possible for everybody, right? Um, so we would have to look at the situation, whether you are capable, whether there is a medical facility or ability to do it safely in a, a way that wouldn't harm your health, then mm. yes, if that is not the case, then you are not held accountable for something that's out of your capability. You don't just, you know, for... Uh, this is a beautiful thing at Islam. Allah never burdens a soul more than they can handle. If you are capable and able and there is a there is a way, then yes, you would. And if there isn't, due to you know, you're being of older age and not having the medical facilities or that around you, then we don't worry about that. I mean, Allah doesn't burden you more than somebody can handle. So that's not an issue. I'm not 20 anymore, so I'm a bit older. I'm 35 <laughs> already. And yeah, now I'm a family circum father. Circumcision like my... is usually a, when you're very young. I mean, if you're past 10, uh, that, that that just becomes a problem later. So. Yeah, but that's my question yeah. as well. So for me, as the head of the household, right? I'm a father now. My son is almost one and a half years old. If I would Excellent. revert, what would I have to do with my son? I would have to bring him to circumcision, right? I mean, so if your son is young enough that you can get him circumcised, then you should. I mean, there are also great health benefits to it. I mean, from the cleansing aspect of it and so on. Um, but again, depending on your country and depending on resources, like in America, uh, for a child that's past six months, it's very difficult to find a place that they can get circumcised. So a lot of the brothers that revert, if their children are one or two or three or 10 or 12, um, it's just not possible for them or it's very expensive. So we don't push the issue because Allah doesn't burden them more than they can handle. Um, but if in the country you're at, you can find a medical facility that will, that will take care of it in a way that's safe and sanitary, then definitely you should. Right on. Another question that I have, and this is especially important for me personally, because coming from an orthodox Christian background, right, this is already a sect, so to speak, of Christianity, even though orthodoxy would claim that it is the original Christianity, of course, but then you look deeper sure. into it. Maybe right. it was the Gnostic Christians, maybe it was Arius, etc., etc. We yeah. don't know that. I got very fed up with sects, looking into Catholicism, Protestantism. Good. It was annoying. So when I read the Quran and it claimed... This is for the believers, right? This is for the Muslims. Yeah. And you shouldn't divide into sects. I said, oh, thank God. This is beautiful. Yeah. This is exactly what I want. I don't want to belong to any type of sect. But then you Good. look deeper into it, and then you see Sunni, Shia, et cetera, et cetera, different schools of thought. Could I become just a Muslim and not a Shia, yes. Sunni, whatever? For sure. And that's what I suggest is you just become Muslim. Um, we as Muslims, the vast majority of Muslims are not in any sect. They're just Muslim. Sometimes we're called Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah because the Prophet ﷺ said, said alaykum bi sunnati upon you is a sunnah to be a, on the way of the Prophet. And a, a Jama'ah means actually to come together as one group, not to separate, right? Mm -hmm. Shia is a sect. Uh, Ismaili, Qadiani, uh, Nation, all these little groups, these are sects that break away. And that's wrong. We, we give them advice to don't break away from the bigger Muslim body that is one Muslim body. But if, and inshallah, when you do today, become a Muslim, you will be just Muslim. That's all you got to worry about. Yes, we have schools of thought. That is not sect. Those are just different ways of deriving uh, rulings. And all of those are in agreement. All those four great scholars were in one belief. They were all, yani, they, weren't, they didn't separate themselves in belief. Is this, you know, when we get into some details of, you know, should you put your hand here or here and you look at the different narrations, like those things, it's a scholarly work, right? But they're not sects. Um, mm -hmm. Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanbali, these are schools, they're not sects. This bigger sects that we do have, unfortunately, 
these are people that have split away from the majority Muslim body. We would say to you, don't worry about any of those. You are Muslim and that's all the title you need. Fair enough. That's really good to hear because, yeah, coming from the Christian background, it is yes, extremely sure. annoying. So now I have a question. This is something that I heard from Sheikh Asim Al-Hakim. And he was speaking about the Muslim <clears throat> Ummah, that it's very weak at this stage, and that once it becomes strong, there could be an expensive jihad, extensive jihad. So this is something that I'm paraphrasing here, but we were speaking about sure. yeah, expansionist wars, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So my question is truly, and I really mean this, yeah. what am I signing up for, right? If I become <laughs> Muslim, no, really, honestly. I'm, I, I'm, I got you, I got you, no problem. I'm completely, I'm completely uh, transparent here. If no, I sign up, wonderful. is it is it my personal belief or do I sign up? Hey, now we are strong enough. We have plenty of people on board. Let's conquer the world. Let's go to war. What is happening? Great question. Uh, regarding uh, Sheikh Asim's statement, I, I won't comment because I don't know the context. I don't right. know the exact wording. But generally, what I will say, in Islam, we don't have a mindset of just conquer. Right? That's not something ever in Islam. If you look at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, he made treaties, he made peace treaties, he made uh, alliances. If you look at the companions of the Prophet like Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu anhum, in their times they had different treaties they made with different nations and so on. Uh, but at the same time, when somebody attacks a Muslim land, then yes, to defend it is a part of our responsibility. Um, sure. If Muslims, like in Spain, if you look at the history, are being tortured and killed, then yes, to defend them and even non-Muslims to stop the oppression upon them is our responsibility. But mm -hmm. the Muslim is never about just conquering and fighting. This has never been the case. This is not in, in uh, the Quran or Hadith. Rather, what we find is that even the Muslim armies, when they would go out in the time of the companions, they would give options. They would say, look, either allow us to spread the message. Let us get this message out. And if you're going to stop us, you know, then there's going to be a problem. If you want, you keep your government, you keep your kingdom, you become Muslim, you stay in power, but you change the 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 your belief set and system to what Allah has ordained, mm -hmm. not to force the people. If you don't want to do that, don't don't become Muslim. We're not going to force people. Pay the jizya. You know, you have your tax, which as Muslims we pay zakat. You will have your jizya. That's how the government runs. Just like you pay taxes in America or in the UK or in Europe. You, yeah, everybody yeah. has different taxes and different brackets and all of that. I, I'd rather uh, pay the jizya than the taxes. Oh, uh, Europe, trust me. To be honest. You know, it's it's even if even <laughs> if you look at jizya and zakat, many times, depending on the, how much wealth you have, zakat will be more. As mm -hmm. a Muslim, why do we have jizya? Why don't we make non-Muslims pay our tax system? Like I live in America, I pay taxes. I don't say, "Hey, I'm Muslim. I'm not going to pay taxes." No, this is this is our system. Right. But as Muslims, zakat is a, a religious obligation. If we were to force a religious obligation on, uh, on another religion, then we would be forcing our religious our religion on them. So right. for them to live in the Muslim land and not pay zakat and use all the facilities would not be fair. So to put them, uh, okay, you have your place, you're, you're here, you're enjoying the services, but that doesn't mean that you're going to take advantage of it you have to pay into the system as well. If a non-Muslim is not benefiting from those services, there's no jizya. Like in America, we have non-Muslims. We don't tell them pay jizya. Why? Because we don't have those services. So the point being that uh, you're not signing up to join any army. There's no khalifa. There is right now. I mean, unfortunately, in the time that we have, we're pretty much just scattered everywhere. It's really a belief system. If we get a united Muslim body and everything in your lifetime and everything, it doesn't mean we're just going to be like marching into countries. No, there has to be reasons. There has to be negotiations. There has to be treaties. There has to be suburb for what we do, right? If somebody is stopping people from entering the paradise and stopping the message, then yes, we as if we have that power, we give them that notice. Look, you can't. You ha people have to be able to recognize their creator, right? If people are oppressing a people, oppressing Muslims, then yes, we defend them. But Unfortunately, right now, that's not even a factor because of the state that we're in. Um, even when the Muslims had power, if you look at historically, in the time of Salahuddin Ayyubi, they didn't just go and attack uh, Spain and Russia and stuff like this. No, mm. even in Jerusalem, and you can look at history, 
They allowed Christians to have their churches. They allowed Jews to have their synagogues. They allowed them to even practice their own personal law in accordance yes. with their religious tradition, a, a freedom that I don't have in America. In America, mm. I cannot say I'm going to, uh, as a Mormon or as a Muslim, uh, I'm going to marry a second wife legally. You cannot, even though that's in the Mormon tradition. It's in the Muslim tradition. It's in many other religious traditions. But they cannot. Right? They're not given that right. But under Islam, non-Muslims would be given that right to have their personal family law by their tradition, right? Yes. Yeah, that's actually and, correct. I looked into the Ottoman Empire, obviously, coming yeah. from the Balkans, and it's true. Otherwise, we wouldn't have all of those old churches still right. intact. I mean, think of this. What, what did the Spanish do at the Inquisition? When they mm. took Spain from the Moors, they massacred all the Muslims and all Jews and other Christians that didn't fit their mindset. They genocided them, right? True. If the Muslims had done that in Spain, you wouldn't have any of that. If the Muslims, if the Ottomans had done that, if if Salahuddin Ayyubi had done that. So as Muslims, we're not just looking at taking over lands or, you know, trying to enforce. That's not the way Islam works. It's never worked like that. Alhamdulillah. Fair enough. My last question is simply, how would applied Sharia ideally look like? Because right now, I don't think we have many countries, if at all, that follow proper Sharia. How would that look like in an ideal world for you? Excellent, excellent. Um, when we look at historically, um, like the times of the Khulafa, the uh, the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, and the time of the Prophet himself, peace and blessings be upon him, and later like Umar ibn Abdul Aziz and those that applied the Sharia correctly, we saw a beautiful society, a society where Christians and Jews can live according to their own traditions if they like, and they can be productive members of the society, a society where you have uh, safety, even in the countries that have some Sharia law, like Saudi Arabia and others, you will find much more uh, of a safe society for your wife, for your children, as a father, yeah. uh, uh, as, uh, as the leader of a household. You'll feel comfortable in those societies more than societies where you have, uh, you know, robberies and carjackings. And, you know, I was recently in London and you look at the stabbings, you, you go to L.A., you go to, I was in Tijuana, you look at the murders, mm. you wouldn't have that under Sharia. Under mm -hmm. Sharia, you have see it's not pre, it's not cure, it's prevention. Right. So let me ask you a very simple question, and, and I'm I'm blunt, like I'm straight about sure. it, like I'm a sure, Muslim, sure. you know. If you knew that you could rob somebody, and let's mm -hmm. say in Norway or Sweden or one of those countries, mm -hmm. and you might, if you get caught, you might go to a jail where you have a TV and you have a workout <laughs> bike. Uh, I mean, we see videos. I mean, I haven't been to a prison there, but this is what we see. Yeah, you might take that chance. You know, if you're, right. you might take that chance. But if you know that if you go and rip a woman's purse and take her stuff, and even though you're not starving, you're not in any kind of need, you're mentally mm. fine, you're gonna get your hand chopped off. You're gonna be walking on like this. Yeah, you're, you're you're gonna be overly honest because you don't want to take that chance. Now in the Sharia. We have checks and balances. We check mental health. We check with person who's in need, person who's underage is not going to be punished. You have those checks and balances. Crimes have to be proven. But the punishment is such that it prevents the crime. In America, we have a huge problem with prisons and prison gangs and people going to jail. Because yeah, the, the setup is wrong, right? everybody's like, oh, if I get locked up, so what, there's this, and then you get locked up, and then some guy's trying to rape you, and then you got to stab somebody, and then it just ruins the whole system, and you don't rehabilitate. You sit in prison mm. for 10 years, get stronger, and build a criminal network, and come out and be a better criminal. That's why the, the rates of people going back to jail are sometimes uh, in the upper 90s. That's insane. Mm. What are we doing? In the Sharia, we don't have a jail system. We only We don't have a prison system. We have a jail system. You arrest uh -huh. somebody, you check if it's proven, if they get lashes, if they get whipped, or they nothing, if they're innocent, or whatever, you're done. You go back to being a productive citizen, and you remember those lashes, and you're like, man, I'm not going to do that again, you know, <laughs> right? I didn't know that. That's very interesting. I didn't know yeah. that there wouldn't be a prison system at all. We don't have a prison system. Yeah, We have uh, a jail system that you arrest uh, mm -hmm. before the case can go. Right. But what's the point of putting somebody in prison for 20 years? Uh, yeah. What does society nothing. benefit your taxes? pay 70, 80,000 a year to keep somebody in a hole that, you know, mentally being tortured, no benefit in that. Right. 
in, in Islam, like in Muslim countries where there's some aspects of Sharia, look statistically, look at the rape rate, look at the, uh, the, the crime rates, look at the murder mm -hmm. rates. They're the lowest in the world. So society with practical implication of Sharia, your wife could walk around without being worried. Your, your children could play in the playground without drug dealers and all of that. You wouldn't yeah, have man. to worry about, uh, you know, people robbing you, people ripping you off motorbikes and doing all the things that we see. You wouldn't have any of those kids. And, and, and I can tell you from having visited countries that may not even have some Sharia, but that are, there is a strong uh, Muslim presence, like a vast majority. People walk around at 2 a.m. I was in the UAE, 2 a.m. People walk around. I was in Saudi and Pakistan. Children, families, no fear. Man, uh, there's places in America, it gets dark. You can't be out. You right. get worried, right? Same in Europe. Yeah. yeah. That was my experience as well in Malaysia. It was yeah. it's beautiful. so family-oriented. Absolutely beautiful. Yes, yeah, so I exactly. haven't seen that anywhere else. Yeah. Right? I mean, you go to places and you, you have a son. I mean, think about it. Your son's going to be walking down the streets. In France, you see fully naked women. You see exactly. uh, in Germany, you have daytime porn being shown. Uh, yeah. I don't want your son being raised in a society like that, right? Yeah, in terrible. the Sharia, look, you have you have that peace of mind. Yeah, now I found that beautiful. I think that sexual imagery or whatever has nothing to do on the outside. Bikinis and bras, advertisements yeah. everywhere. It's absolutely repulsive. Yeah? Can't go to a park without worrying that something will happen. It's terrible. Right. That's why I left Europe for now. Yeah. That's basically it. We went through all of the questions, man. We have been at it for a long, long time, and you answered everything. All right. So I got a question for you. Yes. Arabic first or English first? Brother, I'm going to tell you one thing. As much as I appreciate it, and it would be a great honor to do it with you, yeah. I, I have a thing that I wouldn't like to do it online. You know, okay. for me personally, for me personally, right now I'm in Thailand. Mashallah. Next week, next week I want to visit some masjids here myself. Excellent. I want to see it in real life because up until now everything has been happening online. My journey has no been problem. by myself, and that's why I want to see it in real life by myself and then make the All decision. Right. So let's make a deal then. All right, uh, visit mosques. Check out again. You might find Muslims that are not knowledgeable or doing something wrong don't let that distract you but sure. visit the community check it out uh thailand has a beautiful muslim community i've been there um but when you're ready call me we'll do it on the phone no online we'll do fair it enough. with me fair enough fair enough brother really i thank you from the bottom of my heart for all your questions it. And I think this is not only useful for myself, but for the audience as well, because you answered all of those Islamophobic comments, confusions, Christian questions and whatnot. I believe that this will be of great benefit to everybody. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate your questions, your straight upness. And I pray that Allah guides me and you and puts us on the truth. And I have a very good feeling that very soon, uh, you will be accepting what I think you already have in your heart. The belief that there is one creator, the belief that the Prophet Muhammad is the Prophet of, of Allah. Uh, there is a video I have about the splitting of the moon. Uh, you should check it out if you haven't seen it already. Uh, just, you know, I give the evidences. And inshallah, when you're ready for your Islam after that, give me a call. Uh, I'll, I'll email you my phone, my personal phone number. And inshallah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do your shahada. Inshallah. Don't protect, procrastinate too much. Remember, devil is going to make you want to just put things off. But at the same time, I want you to be comfortable with it. 100%. 100%. I mean, thank you so All much right. again, bro. Appreciate thank it. Thank you for taking time. Thank you. Have a great night. Or day. Yeah, we talk soon. It's over there. Uh, it's still better. Yeah. <laughs> كل السعائر بادية آمنت أن الآخرة لا بد يوما آتية كل الخلائق حاضرة كل السعائر بادية